Hello, my name is Toby Skerritt. I run professional services for Foundation IT, and I'm here today to talk to you about 3D accelerated desktops within the Windows virtual desktop environment. Lots of organizations have a requirement for 3D accelerated desktops for high-end users uh, who may be doing uh, computer-aided design and modeling activities. Um, but beyond that, most organizations and most yet users would benefit from mild levels of 3D acceleration in a virtualized desktop in order to improve things like uh, browser and video performance. So I have a demo environment set up. As you can see, this is a uh, fit Windows Virtual Desktop session and the uh, suffix of the name is 3D, meaning that we have a 3D enabled desktop here. And if we look at Task Manager, we can see this is a pretty chunky desktop. Um, it's got 112 gig of RAM and an NVIDIA Tesla M60 GPU. Um, probably beyond what you'd be looking to give a task or even a power user, it's fair to say. Um, however, for uh, a shared session host where you have multiple users connecting, um, this would be a good solution. Or if you have um, a user with heavy 3D uh, CAD CAM requirements, then this type of desktop would be a good solution. So on this, I've got a couple of little graphical demos and I've also got Fraps enabled, which will uh, show us uh, frame rates just in case uh, any of the uh, video drops out. Um, fairly classic demo to start with, but uh, I've got Minecraft installed on this machine. <laughs> Not much of a business use case for Minecraft, I think it's fair to say. However, it is quite useful in demonstrating um, the overall performance of the environment and uh, the responsiveness of the controls um, because latency is a big concern for users. Um, it's all very well having a, a graphically performant desktop, but if uh, the latency is high, then that's, um, that's going to cause your users issues. And you see I'm moving around quite comfortably in this environment. The frame rate's very good. Um, I can play this game as I would do on my local machine. Um, and I'm, I'm not experiencing any issues with, uh, with latency here. But as I say, not much of a use case in the business environment, but just a, a demonstration to show the art of the possible. So if we close that down, uh, something perhaps uh, which would be more valuable to a business environment is Autodesk, Autodesk Revit. Um, a architectural program which many organizations will use and will generally require fairly high performance uh, physical desktops which will have to be refreshed on a three-year basis and, and have all the costs that go along with that and the support requirements. The nice thing about Windows Virtual Desktop is, is it's essentially an evergreen environment. Um, if you have a hardware requirement uh, or your hardware requirement changes rather over the course of, of a year, um, you can simply upgrade in place this hardware by uh, making changes to the Azure environment. There's no requirement for you to purchase additional hardware, and this is all consumed on a pay-as-you-go basis, uh, meaning that if you switch these desktops off overnight, you're not paying for them. Well, you're paying for the storage assigned to the desktop, but you're not paying for any compute resources, which are the, um, the most expensive element of Azure, I think it's fair to say. So, um, this is a demo uh, Revit model. You can see it's, it's a fairly uh, chunky model in that it's a full, um, full house. Uh, not claiming to be a Revit expert at all, but what I can demonstrate is the performance in the environment. So as you can see, this is a uh, fully anti-aliased scene with realistic lighting enabled. And the performance, if you check out the fraps number on the side, um, is exactly as you'd want it to be in a physical environment. We're hitting 70, 80, 100 frames per second. So performance is exactly as, uh, as you might want it to be in that environment. If we move inside, we have realistic lighting enabled in the living room. And again, you can see performance would be exactly as you would want it to be. You can edit this scene um, exactly as you would do on a physical machine and make changes to the environment. And if we zoom in, you can see we have a realistically textured, 
textured chair there, um, which is again still moving at 100 frames a second. Again, in the plan view, we can see exactly um, what we change or any changes that we make to the environment. So the living room is just, is just where we were, I think. And again, if I move this chair back over there, see obviously that change has been made and then I'll control Z on that and it will move back to where we, where we expect it to be. Um, but performance exactly as you would want it to be for a 3D CAD CAM desktop that your users um, require to edit and uh, create uh, CAD environments. And lastly in here, I just wanted to give a view of um, video performance. Um, this is not, um, the level of CPU or level of GPU we have in this environment is not required to give this level of uh, video performance. Um, however, it's important to consider the inclusion of some level of uh, 3D acceleration in order to give your users the experience they would expect from a uh, standard local desktop. Um, all physical local desktops will have some level of uh, 3D acceleration or modern desktops. Um, and we need to replicate that because browsers such as Chrome and Edge uh, require or certainly benefit from 3D acceleration uh, nowadays in order to give users uh, a better video and general browsing experience. There are lots of web pages that require um, 3D acceleration, for example. And you can see this is in full, full screen 1080p. Um, and performance is uh, exactly as you would want it to be. Um, that's quite remarkable for a uh, virtual desktop, certainly a remote one. Uh, in order to achieve this historically, you would need to spend a lot of money on, on an on-premise environment with um, a shared graphics card, um, which was an expensive investment. Um, now you can achieve it in a pay-as-you-go basis. And the last thing it's, it's worth mentioning is, um, is display settings. So although we can't see them in this session, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a 4K display here, but I'm demonstrating in 1080p, so full HD, um, and there's a reason for that. So 4K is, is a fantastic technology, um, but your Windows Virtual Desktop session um, will only perform as well as your bandwidth allows it to. Um, now, I don't have the best home uh, broadband connection. Um, it's comfortably running a 1080p session, but if I was running at 4K um, on this desktop, that's four times the amount of pixels that need to be transferred from the, the web down to my desktop. And, and certainly my broadband connection wouldn't cope with that. So really important to think about uh, as you look to move to a Windows virtual desktop environment, whether it be a 3D enabled one or, or, or a standard task worker environment, it's really important to think about um, how you will be providing those sessions to users and the bandwidth constraints those users might have. Um, so 1080p requires perhaps five or six meg um, of, uh, of bandwidth for my session. A 4K session will, will probably take 12 to 15 meg and, and, and significantly more if you're trying to demonstrate or view uh, high quality graphics or video with, with lots of pixel changes on a regular basis. So it's something that needs to be thought about um, when as you move uh, remote users to a Windows Virtual Desktop solution um, and something we can certainly help um, architect with you if, if uh, you have that requirement. I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much for watching and uh, look out for future videos. Thank you.